So what's going on guys, my name is Mr. Dalek JD, and this is my ultimate guide to Alpha Omega. When it comes to guides on YouTube, this is going to be your one-stop hub for absolutely everything you're going to want to do in a single game of Alpha Omega in one video. Covering everything from basics to the most complex stuff in this map, such as power and pack-a-punch, all buildables and all their spawn locations, how to get a three ray gun mark to every game as well as all four elemental ray guns, a bunch of cheat codes to make your life easier, and tips throughout the solo easter egg and boss fight. Plus I know this guide is quite a long one, is worth watching all the way through to the end. But if you're looking for specific things in this guide, you can find timestamps to everything in the comments and the description. Now, just to be clear, this is not an Easter egg guide. If you're looking for that, then I'll have it linked in the description or on your screen now. This is an overall map guide to make that Easter egg process even easier for you. So if you do find this video helpful in any way, shape or form, just spending one second clicking the thumbs up would be super appreciated from the countless hours it took to make you this video. If you're looking for teammates to play this map with, let me know your platform and your gamertag in the comments. But without any further ado, let's begin the guide. So welcome to the ultimate guide, my friends. We're kicking it off in the spawn room of Alpha Omega Security Checkpoint. And what we're going to do is we are going to stay in this area and not leave it until all the zombies have spawned in, because that way we're getting all of the spawns in as quickly as we can and also making sure that we just finish the round as quickly as possible, because it's always annoying when there's one zombie just lying around. So we've checked all covers. All right, I'm going to venture off into the site entrance. Now, I recommend you start with the MOG because it's really going to help you out when it comes to that lockdown later on when we are turning on the power and getting Pack-A-Punch. So there we go. First round done. I'm going to recommend you buy the Strife Pistol just as your backup. And uh, we're going to go ahead and go through APD interrogation. Now, as part of the main egg, and also for some of the other parts around the map, you're going to be looking around for various papers so we can check and see if there's a paper there, but there isn't, so that's fine. We're just going to go ahead and double check around here, which it isn't, so it's going to be upstairs right around here. So our Sawyer code is 6213. This isn't going to be entirely needed at this point when you're playing in the game, but if you can find that and write it down early on, it's going to save you a lot of trouble as that is part of the ADAM. So during round two and also round three, you're just going to camp by this debris and you're going to be using your strife if you've got the uh, stiletto knife attachment on it just to kill all the zombies and save your ammo on your mog. But if not, just go ahead and kill them as you would anyway because we're building up points so we can open up the entire map on round four. Now that we have 3,000 points, we're going to go ahead and open this debris. We have the mystery box location, which it is right here. And also it's going to be one of the teleporter parts, but we'll get that a little bit later. So open up around here. You can open either side. I just prefer opening that way and then boom for the 1,000. We can go ahead and turn on the power, which is located in the powerhouse. But I'm sure every single one of you watching knows that. Turning it on is going to spawn in a few dogs. So you've got to be a little bit careful of those. And since we have that temporal gift going, I've had a really, really long insta kill. We essentially just want to try and break our way down. And there we go. That's the drop we were looking for, the double points. To get us a lot of points, we can just open up straight away and do it on this round. One zombie left, so let's go ahead and start opening up the map. So I'm going to open up through greenhouse right here. So just open these doors right here and lead ourselves down into the bunker. And this will lead us into the diner section of the map. But we're just going to follow it all the way along and open up to the generators room, which is where we're going to turn on the main power and the pack-a-punch. So right here, we're just going to press this button and it's going to enable the ventilation systems. And it's also going to spawn in a load of zombies as well as these Nova Crawlers. Now, what we want to do is try and save as many of these zombies as we can. Now, since I only had one zombie left on the round, all that's really going to be spawning in is these Novas, which I'm going to try and get rid of. But we do have some naturally spawning zombies that come in as well. We're trying to get rid of these Novas because they do go ahead and make the zombies ultra fast and we don't want that. The reason why we kept all of these zombies is because we can then kill them and get the full amount of points from them as you can see right here which is really really nice and suddenly we went from having one zombie left in the round to having dozens it feels like absolutely dozens then now I have a lot more points than I did and we can go ahead and turn on the pack-a-punch. So at the moment the pack-a-punch is off and it requires four of these to be lit up green. So in order for us to get that lit up green, we're going to need to turn on four ventilation systems. As you can see, some houses are producing green gas coming out the chimneys or the windows. These are the locations of the four different ventilations. So I'm going to just start with this one. And right here, we're looking to repair a ventilation unit and it will look a little bit like this. 
Now, whilst you are doing this, you are going to have two gas zombies spawn in. They're going to try and kill you whilst you are doing this. So just be very careful. And as we can see, we repaired that one nice and easily. Our next one is behind the yellow house. So I'm going to go ahead and just open up to it. And it's going to be inside here downstairs. And whilst you're doing this, you do want to be very, very aware of your surroundings. Because as you can see, the zombies just surprise you out of nowhere. And that's our second one done. Our third one is going to be right here. And these are randomized every single game. So... Don't worry if these aren't the exact locations that you are getting. The last and final one is just across the road in the other spawn house. So I'm going to just start repairing this. And as you hear, the ventilation system is now operational and Pack-A-Punch is open by round four. Nice and easy. Now what we're going to work on is getting the shield built. Now our first part can be found in the right room from spawn, which is this house right here. And it can be found in three different locations. So the first part can be right here. If not, it can be found on this table, which it is right here. And then if not, head up the stairs and it will be on this filing cabinet here. We're now looking for the middle piece, which can be spawned right here next to this car. It can also be right up against this bus here. But since it's not, our last part is going to be right there. And our last and final part is going to be in the bed section of the map. So it can be on this shelf right here, which it isn't. It can also be laid right here, which it is in this occasion. And if not, it can be on this chair right here. So with all three parts, we can build it at one of three different buildable stations. I'm going to choose the greenhouse upstairs and you'll be able to craft the riot shield and it will be here for the rest of the game unless you go in the boss fight where it will move into the APD room. So now let's work on the telepads. So the first part is going to be in the transfusion facility. It can either be found in this locker right here. If not, it's going to be under this operating table, which it is right here. And then if not, it's going to be on these cardboard bits right there. Our next part is going to be in the greenhouse and it will be right as you come in, which it is in our game. If it's not there, you'll find it in the downstairs kitchen next to the barrier right there. And if it's not there, then you simply find it on the balcony, just perched right there. And the last part can be found in the generator, so it can be right here as you come in from the beds, which it is in our game. If it's not there, it could be perched up right by the generator button there. And if not, then it's by these yellow buckets right here. And you can take it to one of the other buildable benches, so we're going to build it in APD control. And there you go, full telepads built nice and easy. We're now going to work on unlocking Sergeant Adam, which is the civil protector in this map. In order to get here, we're going to need to find four codes around the map. The first being Operation Toy Soldier, which can be found here in Operations, and it's always 7626, so just keep that in mind. The next is Sawyer in APD Interrogations. So like I said, you can find it there, you can find it there, or in our case, I found it up here, so I'm going to write mine down, which is 6213. Next is Peter McCain, which is an APD control, so you just want to shoot these pieces of paper, and my code here is 0142. And then as you leave APD control, you want to go up to the set of keys and hold your interact button to pick up a key. You then want to head into the yellow house upstairs, hold your interact on this cabinet, and you're going to get your Purnell code, which is 6361 in my game. So in order for us to activate that and also to activate the Rushmore computer, once Pack-A-Punch is on, you will need to go to the next round, which is exactly what we're going to do. So I'm now entering my... Operation Toy Soldier code. So now I've entered that, I need to enter my next set of codes. So the Sawyer code goes next. You then ask for your McCain code, which we're going to put in now. We have one minute between putting each code in before we're allowed to move on. So we're going to go ahead and place that in. And as you heard right there, the Sergeant ADAM unit is now activated. And we can use that whenever we want to help us fight off the undead. But we're going to save that because it is part of the main Easter egg. So we're now going to move on to getting the Ray Gun Mark II frame. So we're going to be looking around the map for four TVs. One of them is going to be lit up blue like our one is here in APD control. As we interact with it, it suddenly loads up a Ray Gun Mark II, uh, Mark II image. And after killing a certain amount of zombies, we get a number on it, which ours was eight. So that's the first in our code. So I'm going to write down eight because we're going to need it to unlock the Ray Gun Mark II frame. Now there are four TVs and they randomly change every time you play. So this is what they'll look like when they're off. So site entrance is not my next one because my next one is here in the diner. The four locations that we're going to show you in this video, they're going to randomize every time you play. But you're going to be listening for a little static fuzz as that's when you know that's the TV that's in the next part of the sequence. So my next number is eight. Next TV in my sequence is at the site entrance. So I'm going to activate it and now we're going to start getting kills. My next number is seven and my final TV is going to be right here. And my last number is nine. So once you have all four numbers, you just want to type them into the Rushmore computer exactly as you got them. So my order is eight, seven, nine. 
and he accepts the code. If you look behind you, you'll now have access to the ray gun Mark II frame, which is our first step towards building the elemental ray gun Mark IIs. But before we do that, we're going to need to build the assembly kit. This is going to take up the three spaces in our HUD at the bottom. So in no particular order, we're going to find our first part in the yellow house. And this can be downstairs on the kitchen table, which it's not right there on that bench. So we're going to make our way upstairs and it can either be on this shelf here, which it is. But if not, it can be on this little table. Our next part is going to be in storage. It can either be on this shelf here on this barrel right here, or on the way back to the generator room on that little tank there. And also finally, our last piece can be sat right here with the mannequin on this table. But if not, it can be found on this trolley, which it is right here. And if not, then it can be on this little chair right by the buildable bench. So with all pots collected, head upstairs in operations. And at this table, you can craft the assembly build kit. And it's as simple as that. Now, before we build each ray gun, let's go ahead and get ourselves one for free. So what you'll need is you'll need to open this van here and then purchase the galva knuckles for 5,000 points and look underground for one of these tvs that looks like this there's one in the diner one in beds which is our one right here there can be another location right on the opposite side and if not there's also one in the lounge once you found the tv that's lit up like this we're gonna wait for a zombie and we're gonna kill it with our galva knuckles just like that the tv's gonna come alive and start playing some sound now it will be reading out a letter and then also a few sets of numbers what your job is, is to listen out for every letter and then the numbers afterwards and write it down. And they're going to need to go ahead and apply those into the cul-de-sac in that order. So each letter responds to a different house in the cul-de-sac and the numbers respond to a clock. And if you're very familiar with the main Easter egg, this will be absolutely nothing new to you. But what you need to do is find the house that it correlates to and type that number in on the clock. So my first one was E, so this house is E. So all I need to do is find the clock, which is gonna be upstairs, and I'm gonna put the time of 2.15 in. And right there, we hear security clearance gray granted. Operation weapon storage unlocked. And since this house was our first one, the weapon storage is unlocked, and we get ourselves a free ray gun. So at any point during your code, if you get E, and you put it right in on the clock, you will get the free Porter's Mark II ray gun, which is a ray gun Mark II fully upgraded, which is awesome. I'm just gonna go ahead and finish this quest right here so we activate everything. There's a few other free little bits and pieces that we can get. Now, once you've opened the C clock and got that correct, you're actually gonna open a weapons locker for a free upgraded weapon. And in my game, it's a Titan upgraded, which isn't actually that bad, but I'm pretty happy with my loadout so far, so I'm gonna keep it. But if you wanna get a free Pack-A-Punch gun, there you go. You see from my code, the letter F did not pop up. So whatever code in your game, whatever letter didn't pop up, you have to go into that house and activate the clock as your final step for that Easter egg step. So here F wasn't used, so I'm just gonna activate it and success. Now, since we are going to do the Reagan upgrades, I need to go ahead and pack a punch my gun. Something you can do just to speed things up even better is to type in a secret code, which is gonna be pack. Code pack spawns in a bonfire sale. Combine that with my uh, temporal gift, I should have a minute long fire sale. So now I've got a pack a punched gun, all I need to do is pack a punch it until I get the elemental type that I want on it. Which can be quite an annoying part of this easter egg, but this will obviously make it a lot cheaper for you and reduce it to simply 500 points. So let's begin building and upgrading these ray gun up. So let's begin getting the elemental ray guns. Now, since I've got kilowatt, we're gonna start with the ray gun Mark V. So what we need to do is we need to go into the generators and look for a panel which emits yellow mist, which you can see right here. Now it can obviously be in three spots. The first is right there near beds. Another is gonna be near the ventilation button we press, which is gonna be right here. And lastly, it'll be a panel right here near the tonic perk. All we need to do is shoot this to reveal a canister and we're going to pick it up. Now our next step is to locate one of these different poles. And what we need to do now is locate an electrical pole around the outside, which is sparking yellow. And in my game, it is this one. So I'm going to shoot it with my kilowatt and boom, we got a yellow orb. What we now need to do is go look around the outside of the map to find another sparking pole, which is connected right to it. So we're just going to shoot that and boom, there we go. My third one is going to be right there. The next one is here in transfusion. So I'm going to shoot that nice and easy my last one is up here so once i've shot all of those they're going to connect together and we're now going to need to go and put our 
little ammo container inside here, which is going to cause a soul box. And boom, we just need to stay within this circle and kill enough zombies until this thing is fully filled up. And just like that, it's complete. So I'm going to pick up the ammo canister, go up to the buildable bench inside here, and we can build the Raygun Mark V. And there we go, my friends. Easy as that. Now this can be upgraded and what's great about it is it has infinitely charging ammo, which I really like. But let's go ahead and move over to the Raygun Mark II X. So to build the Raygun Mark II X, we do need cryo freeze on our gun, which we do have here. What we're gonna be looking for is a cabinet or drawer, which emits a blue mist. As we can see, our first location, APD interrogation, has that blue mist, so that is what we need to shoot with our cryo freeze. So I'm going to go ahead and shoot it and it brings out the canister. If it's not there, then you can look for a blue misting cabinet, which would be right here. And if not, it'll be prisoner holding with this cabinet here. What you need to do now is go to any section of the bunker and you're going to notice that as the zombies are spawning in, there's going to be a few which are going to have blue mist emitting from their hand. You're going to need to go ahead and shoot those zombies with our cryo freeze weapon and then melee them when they're frozen, which will drop us a weird goulash part which we can pick up and we're going to need to repeat that three times here we go here's one so i'm going to shoot it then melee it and then boom another one shoot it melee it boom as you can see the goo it's dropped looks pretty awesome so i'm going to go ahead and pick that one up and there's our third one so i'm going to go ahead and melee him and pick it up once you've picked up three samples you'll hear a quote about taking it to apd control and make sure that they are cold so simply place your canister right here and now we have another soul box very simple just kill zombies with cryo freeze in this section until our canister's full. And just like that, we are done. If you've already built a ray gun, what you're gonna need to do is go ahead and store it and pick up another frame. Cause we're obviously building a different ray gun here. So just make your way upstairs and then boom, we have the ray gun mark x and this just is a ray gun mark 2 on steroids i absolutely love it our next one we're going to work on is getting the ray gun mark 2 y which is going to require brain rot we're going to be looking for a smoking pile which can either be in the greenhouse backyard right here it can be in cul-de-sac in one right here or it will be in yellow house backyard which it is right here so you're going to want to get a brain rotted zombie which you go ahead and smash the pile down and you'll be able to claim an ammo canister. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be looking for a yellow orb, which is gonna spawn on one of the random telepad locations around the map. For mine, it was in Yellow House upstairs. So I'm gonna place my telepad down there. And I'm gonna go ahead and shoot it and see where it goes. So I'm like, okay, our orb has disappeared. So now what we need to do is go and find where it teleported to, which in our game is in the diner right here. So I'm gonna place that telepad down again. So now I've got a telepad down in where it teleported to and its original location. So now what I want to do is shoot it and teleport with it. And as you can see, I'm teleporting with the orb. And when I come back out, the orb should be there. And that will have been that step done. You now want to make your way over to storage where the container has teleported to. And placing it down, we just simply need to get kills to fill it up. And just like that, it is filled up. And we can go ahead and craft the Mark II Y. And there we have it. Simple as that. This one, you can charge up and shoots an explosion at the zombies. Not my personal favorite, but it's an option there. And now we're going to move on to the Ray Gun Mark II Z. So what you're going to do is you're going to need firebomb on your weapon. That is the first step. And we're now going to be looking for a cabinet emitting some orange mist. So our first location can be down in the lounge, which will be this one right here. It's not that, so we're going to move on. Our next location is Yellow House back downstairs, which will be this cabinet here. But since it's not, it's going to be our third location, which is Greenhouse downstairs kitchen. So as you can see, it's smoking right there. So we just shoot it and it's going to burn and reveal our ammo canister. Now, outside in the cul-de-sac, one of the houses here is going to be blowing a purple mist out the chimney, which we can see right here is this building here. It will be any of these random buildings, and all we need to do is throw a ray fire, frag or acid bomb grenade directly on top of the chimney. So if it was on this chimney, for example, all you'd need to do is line yourself up, cook your grenade, and throw it straight up into the air. For a chimney like this, it's gonna be a little bit more difficult to get that perfect angle, as we can't just throw it straight up like you can with that one. Excellent. There we go. You see that beautiful Kobe? Oh my good lord. So now this 
becomes a soul box. You place the canister in and we good to go. That took so long to do. That is honestly the hardest one I've ever seen. Goodness me. And then just as normal, soul box, just fill it up with souls and you can use any weapon. And just like that, our ammo canister is done. We can go ahead and build the Ray Gun Mark II Z. And there it is. Raygun Mark II Z. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to go through a bunch of secret codes you can type into the Rushmore computer to seriously help out your games. And if you want to see a full video, I have it linked down below in this video's description. But I'll go through a few very useful ones that you're definitely going to use every time you play this map. So you can only put these in one around and I don't have any perks. And late early on in the game, you might want to get yourself a perk very early on but it might be a little bit too expensive. So I just typed in the code BREW, which is going to reduce the cost of the BREW perk by 50%. Obviously, I don't need it cheaper at this point, but as you can see, my dying wish is now 2,000 points rather than the 4,000. And you can do this for the BREW, soda, SODA, and COLA perk. So just take your pick and type that in, and you'll be able to get your perk of choice for half price. So this next part of the video is going to be solo easter egg steps and to make them as easy as possible on solo. So for this I am going to have used shopping 3 and you can open the entire map up, get the generators on and pack a punch by round 1. And also every time you fix one of the vents you're spawning more zombies which is great. But we're going to finish the round so we can activate the Rushmore computer and get back up to where we were in the last game. So we're on the red Nova Crawler step and as you can see, if you do this early enough into the game, like round three, this will be a lot easier because the crawler will be super fast and not all of the zombies will be running towards you. Now you can also do this on round two if you use shopping free, but for some reason, my red crawler did not spawn in on round two, so I had to go ahead and go to the next round. So that's another thing. If you're doing this step as the round is about to end, you may find that your crawler might not spawn, so just bear that in mind. And also, if you do this early enough on the round, you're not going to have a ton of infinite spawn zombies that are super fast. You will just have slow ones, which is great. But you do have infinite spawning zombies during this step, so you can abuse that and get some points out of the zombies if you so wish. So I'm now in this lockdown step for the Adam robots, where we've got to collect a part for each of the three robot locations we're going to get. And a quick tip, you're going to have infinite spawning zombies during these. So you can kill them like I'm doing, or you can just save them up and keep them. Because they're going to just keep spawning in if you're killing them during these lockdowns. So it's very good to keep these guys, keep killing them. And that way you can basically work your way towards getting a ton of easy points. So you can pack a punch your guns and get them as strong as you need them to be. So we are on to finding the elemental orb, but to make our lives easier, we're going to put in a code which is going to make this so easy on solo. It's one of the best tips I can give you for the solo Easter egg. So on a new round, enter the code 3279 and it's going to activate a five minutes of undead man walking, which is going to make this an absolute lifesaver. So now it's just a case of finding your orb. I've located my orb. I could hear the sound and I found it in the beds. So with this code entered, you can just see how much easier this escort step is on solo without having to worry about any of these zombies just making your life a misery. Now let's jump into the Avogadro boss fight. Now with the shopping free tactic and having a good gun for brain rot, you could get into the boss fight before round 10. Because the free upgraded weapon I got from the weapon locker was a MOG, it took me a few rounds for me to buy another gun and upgrade that enough to get the brain rot attachment for the previous step with the paintings. But anyway, on to phase one of the boss. My main tips when it comes to this section of the boss fight is to just keep your distance from the Avogadro as much as possible. Be sure to listen to the quotes because the quotes will tell you when he's about to attack and do laps around this section of storage right here. Be sure to try and dodge his attacks, making sure he doesn't spawn over here. And there we go, first part done. Now what you don't want ideally is for the Avogadro to be on top of the drops when you get through the first phase because what happened right there is he was on top of the carpenter and max ammo and so we lost them in this room you want to try and keep the other gadro over in this section here not get onto this playable space whatsoever otherwise you are going to have a nightmare and when it comes to this canister you just want to stay 
right here and just trying to have the Avogadro make his way over around the tonic perk. Now this last step with the Avogadro in this room can be quite stressful and difficult because you have to shoot him to get him back into the APD. But this tip should make this quite easy for you. So as soon as he makes his way back into the room, all you're going to want to do is get your specialist weapon out and use your specialist weapon to hit him. This is a great way because not only are you going to be destroying all the zombies that are going to be hitting you whilst you are going for this, but it also hurts him and it's a very safe way to make sure you guarantee to get him inside the APD. And just like that, you will have completed the Easter egg and all you have to do is pick up the shard and you'll get the ending cutscene. But I hope you guys enjoyed this ultimate guide to Alpha Omega. If you enjoyed it in any way, shape or form, a like would be super appreciated on the video. You can check out the description for more reference links to tons and tons of other videos on this map. But thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you next time.